We're going to do selection sort, but first I made a couple of small modifications. My print, I wanted to add uh, beginning and end brackets. So here's my print. So my original result has a left bracket space. Right before I print out result, I have an end bracket attached to it. So I did that just especially when there's zero cards, I wanted to visually see that there's nothing. Um, and it just makes things to me look a little bit nicer. And I did a slightly different for loop. I wanted to test some very specific values of I and I want to just hard code them in. I intentionally wanted to check an empty deck, a deck with one, a deck with two. So I wanted to get these three values checked and then I wanted some larger values. I don't want to go past 10 because for humans it's very hard to see if we're about to do sorting. It's very hard to see if a 40 things are in order quickly, uh, but if there are four, seven, or 10 things, we can do that in a reasonable amount of time. Okay, this is just the output from shuffle right here. So let's start. I'm gonna duplicate the shuffle test. Control shift down. And this is gonna be the selection sort test. So we're gonna call the selection sort method. Now, it doesn't exist yet. And I do want there to be, uh, it doesn't matter, I, think, I, I wanted them to be lined up last time perfectly, but I don't need it now. All right, so there we go. We got a problem because uh, selection sort doesn't exist. So we're gonna create method, selection sort, and we can navigate to it, go to declaration, control B. There we go, so here's selection sort. Now, let's copy what is in the book first. Let's delete this. Paste that in, all right. So for each index i, well we already solved this, it's not very exciting. We did it shuffle right here. So let's go ahead and grab that part of shuffle. Now, first of all, we are starting to have a lot of methods in here and I don't like scrolling past all this stuff repeatedly. So let's get this situated. Uh, nice, it already closed the brackets. Okay, so let's organize this a little bit. Um, here's my getters. I can close that up. Uh, I'm gonna put my getters at the bottom. So I wanna move my selection sort up. I'm closing all these because I don't need to actually work on them. They're already working just fine. So I'm gonna make them take less space. It's called code folding. You hit that little plus button. My swap card works, so I don't need to look at it anymore. Shuffle works. It's got a whole lot of extra space in it. So let's get rid of this extra space now that we made it work. Fold that. Uh, so I'd like selection sort. I think I can cut. Uh, now if you if you do Alt Shift up, like to move, you'll see it expands it by default, which is kind of annoying. Uh, so I'm gonna undo all this. So here's selection sort. I'm actually gonna, I usually don't copy and paste, but I'm gonna do it this time. So I just cut it, Control X. So I'm gonna put it right above shuffle. So it's gonna be a public method, selection sort. Okay, so let's go ahead and make the selection sort work. Find the lowest card at or to the right of I. So the good news is if you finished a lab in the class, uh, you found the lowest card at or to the right of I. You found the lowest card at or to the right of zero, not to the right of I. So we're gonna to need to modify that code. And then once we found that, 
good news is we're going to swap that uh, ith card. So we already have the swap method. Okay, so let's think about how to do this. Now it says lowest card, but we know that when we swap, we're going to need the integer index value, not necessarily the card. We're going to need the position of the card or the index of the card to make a swap. So we'll just leave our first index at I. Uh, let's go right over one. So we need another method. And good news is it's already partially outlined for us. So find the lowest card between low and high. All right, so how do we find the lowest card? Well, we need to look through all the cards. So here's a good way to start. Um, and yes, we will need two for loops to, fill, to actually sort the whole thing. All right, so from low to high, so we wanna start not at zero, but low. And we don't wanna to go to cards.length, we wanna only go to high. Uh, and we probably should write exclusive of high. Uh, for low, it is inclusive. Uh, I strongly recommend that you follow uh, this, what I'm doing here, to include the low value and exclude the high value because so many built-in methods do this already. This is the way arrays are indexed, is you include the lowest value, usually zero, and you exclude the highest value, which would be length. Uh, so I'm just gonna uh, write my, I generally write my methods like this anyways. Um, and you'll see a lot of people will go less than or equal to high minus one, uh, but that's just extra typing that you don't need to do. You just go less than high and you're fine. If when I equals high, this for loop will stop. Okay, so find the lowest card. So hopefully low is not gonna be, low should never be above high. It might be equal to high. Uh, but it shouldn't ever go above high. I'm not gonna put a check in for that. But we're gonna do int low index equals low. All right, now how do I know low is the lowest index? I actually have no idea. Uh, but we're gonna need to start somewhere, so maybe this is the lowest card. All right, in our for loop, now we're going to look at if so the current card, so it'll be cards at the low index. Now it's tempting to say less than uh, cards at the current index, which would be I. All right. Now there's obviously an error here. We'll fix this in a minute. Uh, so if the card is lower, if the low, actually we wanna go the other way around. There we go. So if our current card is lower than what we thought was the lowest card, then we're gonna set low index equals to I. All right. There we go. When the for loop is done, it should have found the lowest and return low index. There we go. So this is how to find the lowest, uh, but we can't use this inequality. Good news is there's a method inside card that we're going to use, and it's the compare to. And this tells you if two cards are in order or not, meaning if the first card is lower than the second card. Um, I'm doing suit first, which I don't like, so I'm going to switch it to rank first. So it will compare the uh, rank, and so if the rank is less, then the card will be less. And only if there's a tie will it ever look at the suit. So how do we use the compare to method? It's a public method, meaning it's going to be called on the card object. So let's go back to deck. So cards is an array, but as soon as you put cards at position I, this is a single card right here. So we go dot and 
look at that compare to now we need to put the other card in the parentheses the other card is here there we go now it still has a problem I'm gonna space this out a little bit so you can see maybe a little more clearly what's happening so here's a card the method is compare to the other card is here but this compare to method uh, returns an integer so what that means uh, we need this to be true or false so I'm gonna say if this is less than zero all right, so this should grab the lowest index and return the low index. Okay. I believe this should work, but I do want to test it. So I'm temporarily going to make this public. So we saved. I don't care about shuffle. Currently selection sort doesn't do anything. So we're just gonna print the deck and then we're gonna do deck dot, what is that method we just wrote? Index lowest, there we go. Now I'm gonna go from zero to, now I need to grab the length. How do I know how long the deck is? Somewhere in here we had a getter get cards will return the array of cards and then I can use the length off of that. Get cards dot length. Okay, so this is the max index. And remember it's exclusive. I did that on purpose so that our code would look beautiful right here. We'll make this look better in a minute. So this is a int min index, and then we'll sout that. All right, run this, and we should You can mostly ignore here because it doesn't make sense. Uh, there, actually, in an empty array, there is no index zero, so that you shouldn't, this is another reason that this method's private. You shouldn't be calling it uh, on a size zero, so ignore that. Good news is on size one, the smallest is zero. Size two, which one's smaller, we're comparing the rank, so this is actually considered the small one, so the min index will be zero, that's correct. Next one, three is the smallest, which is at index two. Next, bum, 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 smallest five, is that position five? One, two, three, four, five, wait, zero. One, two, three, four, five. All right, that's at index five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. So the smallest is at position six. Okay, so it looks like it works. Uh, I'm gonna quickly uh, do a find max. Where are we at? Lowest index, lowest. All right, I'm gonna show you how easy it is to do a highest index. We already had the compare two. So one way to, to change it would be to, to change the cards low index and the cards I. That would be one way to change it, very valid. The other way to do it is just turn that around it doesn't matter what you actually call this right here. I probably shouldn't call it low index. Uh, control R is rename. Let's be lazy and call it index. Mm. I want to, no, nah, that's too lazy. Be a little more descriptive. Oh, now it doesn't match that one above. Oh my goodness. All right, now everything matches is perfect. Uh, we could, it's already public, great. Uh, we'll duplicate these guys. Sometimes it's very useful to 
write similar methods at the same time while they're fresh in your mind. All right, so I think that should, and we're also gonna retest the min index as well. All right, so it works in the length one case. Oh, look at that, they're the same. Um, when they're the same, uh, it doesn't matter which one's low, which one's high. So it's just gonna default the way our code's written, it'll default to the first, the initial low value. All right, next up, min index two. The ace is considered low uh, in our compare to method. Uh, the highest index is a king, which is higher than a 10 at index one. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Uh, highest index is a 10. Yes. All right. Highest index is a nine, which is probably that queen of hearts. Okay. So it looks good, uh, but we're not checking. I'm going zero to the uh, length of the deck. Uh, so I'm not actually checking uh, by modifying that value. Uh, if I do modify it, however, So for example, let's go and do, instead of start at position zero, let's start at position two, but I'm gonna run into problems because our array needs to have at least three elements in it or else we're gonna get an index out of bounds exception. Actually, hey, let's have fun. Let's get that index out of bounds exception. Here we go. Not always fun when I tell you what just happened. Oh, I think it just ran zero times instead of getting indexed out of bounds. All right, anyways, I'm gonna take, it doesn't make sense to, to do it on a small deck with, with less than at least three things in it. All right, so now it's starting at position two, zero, one, two. One, two, three. The min index is two, which is that. The highest index is three, which is that. That one was not a great example because these neither of these were lowest or highest. All right, good news is, look, we got our highest cards at the beginning, but highest index is four. Why is that? Because it's skipping, it's starting at position two and it's looking only the highest from position two to the end. And in this case, there's a bunch of queens. Now I think the queen of hearts beats the queen of clubs which is why it chose index three. Uh, the alphabetical order of the suits is how they're ordered. So queen of clubs comes before queen of hearts. So that's why you see highest index four. Uh, let's look at the last one. Ignore the first two, because we're starting at index position two. So zero and one get ignored. So it's the minimum, looks like right there. And the maximum is the king right there. So. This is not an exhaustive test, but because we're recording, this is good enough for now. I'd run it a few more times to be sure and maybe drop like a 15 in there. And I'd probably modify this, maybe put it like three and three, uh, but I'd run it a couple times with some slightly larger values in here to be sure, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna work. So now we're gonna switch these back to private. Of course, that'll make our code very upset over here. This you can't call private outside the class. All right, so we're gonna do selection sort in the next video.